has a question or yeah, I had a question. I was going to ask if you can record it, but Catherine already said that. Thank you. <laughs> I read your mind, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I will share my screen. Okay, can everyone see this? Yes. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Jennifer Nablahis, and thank you for attending this session to discuss the next steps of the grant process. I'm sure everyone is eager to start working on their grants, but there is still a lot to be done to get to grant execution. Um, in this presentation, I will go over where we are in the process the modifications to the proposal, budget details, grant agreement, progress and financial reports, and next steps. So looking at our process flow diagram, we received the applications, we finished the review of the applications, and have selected the awardees. And now, we are at this stage of the process, which is modifications. Before we can even start drafting the grant agreement, we must make sure that the proposals are complete. So each of the grant managers assigned to your grants will or have reviewed your proposal and added comments. The comment document will be located on the grantee evaluation summary page where your scores are located. Next page. Next page. OK. When there are comments waiting for your action, all of the authorized officials assigned to the documents will receive an email notification that modifications are needed. So when you receive this email, you will log into SAGE and open your application documents. This will be on your My Task list on the home page. You will then go to the Forms menu and scroll down to the Grantee Evaluation Summary page where your scores are located. On this page, you will see your comment document. You will click on the link and the document will open to your proposal. And there will, in the proposal, there will be highlighted sections with comments. You will need to address the comments by going back to the application pages on the forms menu and revising the pages where the comments are located. So the idea is that the application will eventually be your scope of work that we put in your grant agreement. For the financial aspect of the proposals, many of the comments will be on the budget details page of the application. I would like to go over what information is needed on this page, and to help you out, we created a budget details guidance document, which we will be, we will be sending out to all the attendees after the presentation. I will go over the categories and the information that is needed for each in the next few slides. But in general, the information in the budget details page should show us how you calculated the amounts we put in for each category. To start off, um, for the salary category, this is broken down to two types, depending on if you want to provide hourly rates or salaries. The tables illustrate what information is needed for each type. For the hourly wages, we will need the title, the employee name if known, the total hours they will devote to this grant, their hourly rate, and this will help calculate the total amount they will receive. For salary employees, you will indicate their annual salary and the percentage of time they will work on the grant. If the grant is multi-year, then add the percentage per year and then calculate the total amount based on this information. Next, for the fringe category, we will need to know the employee's name or title, the total amount that will be paid to them for this project, 
the fringe rate, and this will determine the total amount of fringe for the employee. This information will be needed for each employee listed in the salary category. Next is next, next is the contractor subcontractor category. If you are hiring a third party, they should be put in this category. If the contract or subcontractor is known, please put in the company name and detail what work they will perform and the estimated cost for the work. If the company is not known, you can put in TBD and describe the work that needs to be performed and the estimated cost you set aside for this work. In the supplies category, we will need to know what you will be purchasing and how many, the estimated costs, and why you are purchasing this. And then for the monitoring category, you will have to let us know what type of monitoring will be performed, the amount, and why this, is, this needs to be done. If you are hiring a lab to do any analysis, the lab company should be put in the subcontractor category. But if you are doing the lab analysis on your own, then it would be put under this monitoring category. In the training category, we will need the type of training, whether it be a conference, a training for the public. We would know, want to know the amount for the training and then a cost breakdown of how you derived at the training cost such as registration fees, facility fees. Um, I do want to note that food purchases are not allowed to be reimbursed by this grant. It's federal money and we are not allowed to um, reimburse for food. Next is the travel category. You will indicate the type of travel, the mileage rate, estimated miles, and the amount for this travel. Um, we have increased the state rate to 47 cents per mile, so you should use this rate in the calculation. Um, also, please detail why the travel is needed. There is an audit category. If you need this, we will need to know who will be doing the audit and how much it will cost. And then the next category is indirect. Um, indirect costs cover a portion of the grantee's general overhead costs, such as toner cartridges, printer paper, lighting. But if the office supplies are directly related to the project, then you should move it to the supply category. Um, all indirect costs are calculated as a percentage of modified total direct costs. And um, MTDCs includes the salaries and wages, fringe, materials and supplies, services, travel, and up to the first 25,000 of each subcontract. Uh, you do not have to use all of these categories to calculate the MTDC, but you should indicate what categories that you do use. And then, MTDCs do not include equipment purchases, capital expenditures, rental costs, scholarships and fellowships, um, or the rest of each subcontract if it's above 25,000. So once you determine the categories for the MTDCs, you will add up the category expenses and multiply it by the indirect rate or the NICRA rate to calculate the total indirect cost. So if you have a NICRA rate, you must provide us with the documentation for this rate. If you have a NICRA rate, but you want to use a lower rate, rate, you must have your financial office provide us with a memo approving the lower rate. Um, for this documentation, you can upload this in the supplemental attachments page of the application. And then if you do not have a NICRA rate, you can use the baseline rate of 10%.
The next category is other. This is for anything that does not fit in the other categories already mentioned. And then we have match. We have two types of match, in-kind and cash. In-kind match is strictly volunteer time only or equipment donation. The volunteers are not getting paid and there is no money being exchanged. For this, we will need to know the name of the volunteer, if known, or the estimated number of volunteers, what the volunteers will do, the total number of hours, the hourly rate, which you can Google the national volunteer rate is, and this will help calculate the total amount. Everything else would fall under the cash match. This can be for employees, subcontractors, who will not be paid out of the grant, but are still getting paid by their organization or company. Um, any supplies that will be purchased by volunteers or another organization is a cash match. And cash donations from another funder or grant. You will need to provide the same type of information as before to show us how you came up with the amounts. And then lastly is the other funding category. This category is for other funding or grants you may be using for this grant, but are not claiming as a match. Um, we will need to know what the funding is, the amount, and how will it will be used in this grant. So once you revise your application, you will send it back to us by going to status changes and then clicking the apply button underneath modification submitted. We will then review your changes and if acceptable, we will officially award the grant and draft the grant agreement. Looking at the process flow diagram again, we will be at this stage of the process. Um, we will initially fill out the agreement forms and then pass it to, back to you for agreement modifications. All the authorized officials will receive an email notification that agreement modifications are needed, which is at this stage of the process. At this time, you will see a grant agreement section in the forms menu below the grantee evaluation summary page. And then some things you should think about to prepare for the grant agreement are, do you need a work period before the grant execution date? If you do, you will need to send an email request with the start date you propose and a justification detailing why you need a start earlier than the execution date. We will then send your request to our management for review and decision. Please note, we will not accept a work period start date before we have accepted the revisions to your proposal. Also, you will not be able to receive any reimbursements or advance payments until after the grant is executed. Next is advance payment. There is an option for advance payment if your organization does not have the funds to pay for the work upfront. When submitting financial reports, you must provide any invoices, receipts, along with the proof of payments, which means cancel checks, bank statements that show the invoices were paid. You will then be reimbursed for those, those payments. If you do not have the funds to do this, it is best to have advanced payments in your grant agreement. We can come up with a schedule when the funds will be dispersed but we cannot disperse any future funds until 90% of the previous advance payment has been spent. Next, uh, we will need insurance information such as liability, automobile workman's comp, if applicable. This insurance is for the grantee organization only. And then if you have any contractor subcontractors that you know you will be using, we will need their business registration and contact information in the grant agreement. If you do not know this yet, this is fine, uh, but you will need to provide us with this information when you submit an invoice for the new subcontractor in order to get reimbursed. 
So for any work period or advanced payment request, you should email your DEP grant manager and you can also CC me. So after you submit the modifications to the grant agreement, the last stages of the process are approvals. This will be from the Office of Legal Affairs, the management of the Water Quality Restoration Program, Budget and Finance Office, and then to the Assistant Commissioner for Grant Execution. Throughout this approval process, we may receive questions or comments from the different offices, so we may be asking you for additional information. So when the grant agreement is sent to you for grantee signature, which is at this point of the process, the executor of the grant will need to log into SAGE and review all the pages of the grant agreement. The grant executor will sign the approval signature page and check mark the certification boxes, which I believe is on attachments A1, 2, and 3. Um, only the executor of the grant should check mark the certification boxes and save the page so that their name appears at the bottom. If anyone else goes in and saves the page after the executor signs off, their name will overwrite the previous signature, so please be careful. I would suggest when the grant agreement is at the agreement modification stage and you have another person filling out the agreement forms, they should not check mark and save the page where they see a certification box. And then the executor of the grant is named in your resolution. And there is standard language in the grant agreement for you to fill out. Um, for the resolution certification, the resolution must be certified by a person other than the individual authorized to execute the agreement. And the certification page must be no more than 60 days prior to grant execution. Um, Whoever is the certifier will need to be added as a member of the organization with the role of authorized official. This person will then go to the resolution certification page, fill out the page and save so that their name appears at the bottom. After they sign, no one else should save this page or else their name will overwrite the previous signature. And then once the grant is executed, you will need to submit quarterly progress and financial reports. You will have to search for your grant document by going to the My Applications tab. Um, and then once you open the grant, you will go to Related Documents and Messages. Here you will see two links to initiate the reports. This is because the progress and financial reports are two separate documents. If you can initiate the reports, please initiate it as soon as you can. The date you can initiate the reports is the day after the quarter has ended, up until the date the reports are due. Um, so when you initiate the reports, it gives us uh, the flexibility to extend your report due date if needed. And then after the due date, the reports will not be available. Um, if this is the case, you will need to contact me for assistance. I do want to point out that you will not be able to initiate the next reports until the previous reports have been approved and accepted. Therefore, it is very important that you submit the reports by that deadline we set and to contact us if you are having difficulties. And then here are the quarterly report due dates, um, May 15th, August 15th, November 15th, and February 15th. And then next steps. Um, I plan to upload the proposal comment documents by the end of the week. Um, when this is completed, you will receive an email notifications. And as Catherine suggested, um, grant managers and grantees can discuss the comments um, before you submit the modifications back to DEP to make sure that everything is addressed. 
And then lastly, we ask that um, you submit the modifications within 30 days of receipt so that we can start drafting the grant agreement. Um, so here is the list of the DEP grant managers assigned to your grants. Uh, I have South Jersey RCNV, the City of Newark, Lisa has South Jersey Land and Water Trust, the City of Trenton, Lynette has Rutgers and the Barnegat Bay Partnership, Andy has Pember Pemberton Township, um, Burlington County Health Department, City of Hoboken. Paul has North Jersey RCND, SCMUA, Camden Community Partners, um, New Jersey Department of Ag, Vincent Frankfurt Township, Town of Secaucus, How Howie or Harold has the Hackensack Riverkeeper, Jersey City, Tony Rutgers, the Nature Conservancy, and then Yasso, um, WMA, MUA, Debbie, the Watershed Institute, and Claire, the New York, New Jersey Baykeeper. And then this is my contact if information if you have any questions. So this is the end of my presentation, but I don't know if there are any questions in the chat. I haven't seen any questions pop up, so we can just open the floor if you have any um, any questions for us. Steve? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> Jen, who's the project manager for the uh, Carver Lake Foundation? I missed that. Um, you I know am. what? Who was Vincent, Vincent Grassi. Okay, thank yep. you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Vincent. Yep. <clears throat> in the chat. I'm just wondering the recording for this meeting so we can go back and reference some of the materials. Where can we access the recording following the call? We will, um, <clears throat> after the call, we will have to get it um, made into the right document so you can access it and it will uh, be emailed to you from the meeting. So if you were forwarded the meeting, it'll go to whoever you forwarded it to. If that, yeah. Okay, thank Rick you so Ferru much. Rick Ferrugia, Greater Culver Lake Watershed. Um, you mentioned a modified total direct cost. Um, does that mean that it might be that uh, we can exceed the allocated grant total? No. Okay, so no. is there any provision at all for inflation? Uh, was was no. that considered at all? No. No, you would provide us with, you know, the salary rates or the total salaries or lab, lab fees. Yeah. No, it yeah. increased, uh, substantially. So I was wondering if anything. Yeah. Was and it's a per the modified total direct cost. You will add that up and then it's multiply it by your NICRA rate or the indirect cost rate, which is I, depending on what your organization is, mm -hmm. you might use 10% or, um, I don't know. Right, but that's, you're staying within the allocated uh, grant, okay. Yeah, so sometimes people take the total grant amount, awarded amount and multiply it by their indirect cost rate and that's not acceptable they would have to go into each of the categories and um, determine which categories is, is an acceptable MTDC. And then if they have a subcontractor that is above the $25,000, let's say 50,000, they can only use the 25,000 of that um, subcontract for the MTDC. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. 
it does get a lit little tricky, um, that category. Uh, I also want to point out if there are any new members to the organization or if there are project managers or financial officers who you previously are no longer with the organization, um, you would have to add them as members of the organization, the new members, and then um, kind of modify the I think it's the profile information of the application with the correct name. If I know there might be some staff changes, so. I also wanted to point out if you are having um, a meeting with another agency or di division of the DEP, please try to remember to include your grant manager so that they are aware of maybe permitting issues that you have or other things. Sometimes we are not in the loop um, and that you are, like I said, waiting on permits or something else from someone else in the DEP. So please try to keep us in the loop and include us whenever possible in any um, other meetings. We can also help coordinate those meetings um, so that way it's also time, you know, done in a, in a timely organized manner and easier for you. Uh, what is the timeline for responding to comments? Um, I asked 30 days uh, from receipt. And then should the grant manager be submitting the progress and financial reports? Uh, your project manager should be submitting the progress, the progress report and your uh, chief financial officer should be submitting the financial reports. I hope that answers the question. Anybody else have any other additional questions? Like Jen had mentioned, she does hope to get um, everything out into Sage by the end of the week so that you can, um, you know, we can go from there and and then reach out to her or your grant manager with your specific questions. Um, this is this is a joint agreement. We're here to work with you. Um, so, like I said, the best way is to keep us informed um, and to like let us help you so we can navigate through what the, the next steps. Okay. Thank you all for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.